everybody. In this video, we are looking at the technique of using microarrays, uh, which are used in genetic technology. So first of all, what's the purpose of these things called microarrays? Um, there, there are several uses. We're going to look at two of them. So the first of them is looking at gene expression. So if you think just about humans, in our cells, each cell has got exactly the same genes. So there would be tens of thousands of genes in each cell. But in any one cell, only some of those genes would be expressed, which means being um, transcribed and translated into proteins. And different types of cells would be expressing different genes. So we can use a microarray to work out which genes are being expressed. So there's lots of comparisons you might want to do. One example of how you could do it, uh, use a comparison of gene expression is if you're going to look at cells from uh, healthy tissue and compare that with cells from diseased tissue. So if we say that each of these letters represents a gene, so you can see that both of these cells have got the same genome. So we've just said there are five genes in this particular genome. In the healthy tissue, gene A, B, D and E are being expressed. So the blue colour represents the messenger RNA version of that gene. So gene A is converted into messenger RNA. Gene B is converted into messenger RNA. But gene C is not converted into messenger RNA. And then in our disease tissue, if we do the same thing, if we look at the messenger RNA which the cell is producing, we can see that it is only expressing genes A, B and D. They are the only genes which are transcribed into messenger RNA. So that could tell us something about the cause of the disease. Maybe there is something about uh, gene E which is causing the disease uh, because it's not being expressed. Um, equally, it could be that maybe that cell in that disease tissue is expressing gene C in addition. So the healthy cell does not, but the diseased uh, cell, or the, the cell in the diseased tissue does. So we have to interpret it in different ways, but that's what it allows us to do. The second thing we want to look at is comparing the genomes. So if you've got two closely related individuals, you could compare the genomes. So for example, maybe we've got a father, and there's his genome, uh, and then you've got a son. But there's something in his genome which is different. So the son is not showing gene C. So, for example, it just might mean that there's uh, maybe there's a mutation. There, maybe there's a, a bit of DNA which is missing. Maybe there's an extra bit of DNA that's been inserted. We can compare the DNA of our cells from two individuals where they are closely related. Okay, so we'll just have a sort of an overview of how the microarray works before we look at the details of it. So a microarray is uh, is very small, so it could fit onto a microscope slide. So this would fit on a microscope slide, and on the microarray um, are these little we would call them wells. Okay, so almost like little indentations. Okay, so it would look a bit like that, and a DNA probe is attached into each well. So that means it's a small section of single-stranded DNA. Okay, so something like this. Now the DNA probe would um, be, oops, sorry. Uh, the DNA probe would have uh, more nucleotide bases than this. Um, it would still be a small section, so it wouldn't be, for example, an entire gene. It would just be a section of a gene. And it would be unique. So in each of these wells, there would be a unique DNA probe. So the scientists, the laboratories that make these microarrays will know that the probe in this well corresponds to um, a gene or a coding region, which we'll call A. And in this well here, there's a different uh, DNA probe. So the uh, base sequence is different and it corresponds to maybe a different gene, gene B, and so on. So the uh, the company that makes these knows 
which gene is represented by the probe in each of these wells. So if you have a piece of DNA from your sample cell, uh, that piece of DNA, if it's complementary, then it will be able to bind, sorry, I've done it again, it will be able to bind to the DNA probe. And what you do is you take your, um, you take your DNA or messenger RNA, depending on how you're using your microarray, uh, from the cell that you're interested in, and you add a fluorescent tag. So it's just something which is added onto the end of the DNA or the RNA, which you've extracted from your cell, and it's fluorescent. So it could be a red tag, it could be a green tag, and you, you can use different colors. So what you do then is you hybridize. So you add your DNA or RNA from the cell onto the microarray. And if they are complementary, then the DNA or RNA will bind to the probe. So here they have hybridized. What that means is that if you then shine a laser on your microarray, any of these uh, wells here, so remember there's a different probe in each well, any of them which have a hybridized uh, probe will have a fluorescent tag in that well because there's a fluorescent tag on the DNA or RNA that you've extracted which is bound to the probe. So in this case this is the well for gene A so what we would see is we'd see that in this well here which corresponds to gene A there's a red fluorescence when you shine the laser on it. So that's how the microarray works. So what you would end up with is any of these spots where there has been a successful hybridization, you would see, um, in this case, you've used a red fluorescence, so you'd see that red fluorescence showing up. Uh, so for example, you might see a pattern like this. And again, because you know from the laboratory, the company that makes this microarray, you know what each well represents in terms of the gene, so you can identify um, either which genes are being expressed or which genes are present, depending on what you're trying to find out. Okay, so gene expression profiling. Let's have a look at this first of all. So this is the idea that if you've got DNA in a cell, um, then there will be different sections of that which would be genes and would code for a protein. So here we've got genes A, B and C. And if gene A is transcribed, so transcription takes place, we would then have um, a section of messenger RNA, the transcript of gene A. If gene C gets transcribed, then we'd have the messenger RNA for gene C. Uh, but if gene B is not transcribed, so that means it's not expressed, then we won't have any messenger RNA for gene B. So in a cell, in the nucleus, in this example, we can see that in the nucleus we have the red, which represents gene A, uh, and the purple, which represents gene B, sorry, gene C, having been transcribed. So this is the messenger RNA produced. That messenger RNA is then going to leave the nucleus. So in our cell, we would have lots of messenger RNA for gene A and gene C because they are being transcribed, they're being expressed, but there's no messenger RNA in the cell for gene B because gene B is not being expressed. So what we would then do is we would then extract that messenger RNA. So all of this messenger RNA, any messenger RNA in the cell, you can extract it. And once it's extracted, we would use reverse transcriptase, okay, the enzyme, to turn that messenger RNA into single-stranded complementary DNA or cDNA. So what we've got now is here we've got a strand of messenger RNA um, bound to a complementary strand of DNA. Then we add our fluorescent tags and we add it onto the complementary DNA. 
So in this case, again, we've used a red fluorescence. And then what we do is we have to remove the messenger RNA because we need something, we need single stranded DNA for our microarray. So you can use um, uh, sort of various chemicals to actually break down the messenger RNA. So what you're left with are single stranded um, sections of DNA which match with the genes that you are interested in looking at. And then you take that and you put it onto the microarray to see uh, which genes hybridize. So these are the wells of our microarray. We're just looking at three of them to represent these three genes, although obviously in reality a microarray would have a large number of uh, DNA probes in it. So here are probes for DNA for section A. And you can see that there's more than one. So in any one of those wells on the microarray, there will be multiple probes which are identical. Then we've got probes for DNA B, section B. So it, it could be a gene, it could just be a coding region. And then we've got the probes for DNA section C. So we would then hybridize. And when we do that, we would see that because in, um, if you look here, we've got a lot more of the gene for DNA section C, a lot more of that is present. So that is being transcribed at a higher rate than gene A. So we've got more of these purple strands representing gene C. So in our well here, we can see that all of these probes have hybridized. We haven't got as much of our um, complementary DNA for gene or DNA section A. So only one of those has hybridized. And we haven't got any in this well here because gene B was not expressed. So now what we can do, oh, hang on, what you what can sometimes happen if there's just a little bit of the, um, the DNA probe which hybridizes, end up with something like this. So you can see it has, it's got like a little kink in it there. It hasn't completely hybridized. And then what you do is you wash the microarray and any DNA that has not completely hybridized to the probe will get washed away. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to look at these again under a laser. So these are just the wells when you're looking at them from above. We add the laser and what we would see is that this well here, we would get red fluorescence because we've had hybridization. However, in this well over here, because we've had more hybridization, it would glow red, but it would be a much higher intensity and there would be nothing here. So with this microarray, not only can we see which genes have been expressed, but we can also see the, um, how uh, much it's being expressed. So how high is the rate of expression? So we can see here that gene C is being expressed much more than gene A because the intensity of the fluorescence is higher. Okay, so what about comparisons of gene expression? So we're going to look at the same idea here. So here we've got our DNA probes. And this time we're going to be comparing a healthy and a diseased cell. So in our healthy cell, what we can see here, so here is the messenger RNA which has been extracted from the cell. And as before, we have um, used first transcriptase to get our complementary DNA. And we're going to use a red tag in the healthy cell. In the disease cell, again, we've got our messenger RNA. Uh, we extract that messenger RNA from the cell, use our reverse transcriptase, and this time we're going to use a green tag. So use a different color tag in our healthy and diseased cells. Then we get rid of our, oh, hang on, sorry. So when the hybridization takes place, actually I missed a stage because we would have to remove the messenger RNA first of all. So when we've done that and then we look at our hybridization, this is what we would see. So if DNA, DNA A, so the red sections, uh, we would get hybridization from our healthy cell and our disease cell. So we can see a red and a green 
uh, fluorescent tag. DNA B would have uh, hybridization from the healthy cell and DNA C would have hybridization from the disease cell. So again, we'd use our laser. This time what we'd see. So this gene here or this coding region, DNA B, would glow red because we've got a red tag here. So that tells us that this piece of DNA um, is being expressed in our healthy cell. We would get a green fluorescence here which tells us that this DNA, DNA C, is being expressed in our disease cell. DNA A though has got the red and the green fluorescence and with red and green light together you get yellow light. So this enables us to see which genes are being expressed in which cells and it could be one cell, the other cell or it could be both cells. Okay, genome analysis. So this is looking at the presence or absence of genes or alleles um, in different individuals. Okay, so um, again, we've got our um, genes. So this time it is genes. And these are the probes. So these are the, the probes, again, sections of each gene. Um, I've just shown two in each well, just to keep it a bit simpler, but there's no reason for that. Uh, there will be multiple probes in each well. And we're going to compare, um, as we saw before, a father and a son. We're going to compare those genomes. So here we've got um, a chromosome. Obviously, there will be many of them. We're just simplifying it. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to take the double-stranded DNA of the chromosome um, and you have to separate it. Okay, So you have to denature the DNA so you end up with single-stranded DNA. Once you've done that, you can extract it from the cell. Then you can cut it into fragments. So you'd use enzymes to cut the DNA up into fragments and then you can analyse them. So I'm going to now just use different colours to represent these different fragments. So there's a fragment there, another fragment there, and a fragment there. And again, like with the sum, we've got a fragment here, a fragment here, and a fragment here. Um, you can see they're not identical, so I'm going to use some colours to make it easier to see. So the father and the son both have got uh, three different uh, fragments in each. Obviously, if you were doing this analysis, you wouldn't be able to see those colours. Uh, you've just got a big um, mixture of different DNA fragments. So we need to add these to our microarray. So we don't have to use reverse transcriptase here because we've already got this is DNA. OK, so we're starting with DNA. So all we need to do is add our fluorescent tag. So we're going to tag with red for the father and green for the son. Then we would allow it to hybridise with the DNA probes. And then again, what we do is we use our laser to see what colour uh, the microarray goes. So in this example, what we would see, gene A is present in both father and son. So it would be yellow. Gene B is also present in father and son. It would be yellow. Gene C is only present in the father, so it would be red. This gene here, which I've used as yellow to represent it, is not um, it's only in the sun, but it doesn't match with any of these, so it doesn't hybridise. So it could be that this represents a section of DNA that possibly has mutated. Okay, that covers microarrays. Um, I hope that makes sense, and thank you very much.